Welcome to our pineapple project. Today what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush and we're going to dry rub. Dry brushing is where there's scratches of color left overlapping like hairs on your head kind of and slowly you start with your background as your darkest shadow and then slowly build these little scratches of color and then it gives you the illusion that you have shading and highlighting going on and really in essence what we're just going to do is be highlighting. So I'm going to show you really quick how to how we do that. We start with um, my favorite dry brush. It's on my website. It's a, a Royal Fusion brush and it's a filbert but it's cut more like an oval glaze brush so in addition to being cut um, in this round tip shape it's also shaved from side to side so that it gives you just little scratches of paint when you load it correctly. And the way you load this you can get it wet if you want to the um, term dry brushing is means that it looks like the paint was dry when you put it on, so it scratches the paint. What you're going to do is you're going to dig into, I pinched out all the water, you're going to dig into your, your wad of paint there. This is not a wet palette. It's not very safe to use a wet palette in this technique because it gets to be like dry washing and we don't want it to look like a wash. So we start pushing down and notice I'm not leaving big trails. It's very transparent color that I'm pulling out. I'm pushing all the way down on my ferrule and I'm splaying the bristles out. And you may think that this is ruining your brush, but it's a $5 brush, so we're not going to worry. And this is the way that the technique is done. Okay, and I just keep blending that paint. The first load is the hard one, and then you just use it for, you know, half a day, go on from there. You just keep loading more paint. This is all done, dirty brush, which means we don't wash our brush in between unless things start getting dried or just out of control. If you start getting out of control, wash your brush and then dirty your brush in the preceding color again. Okay, and what's going to happen is you're going to get a shiny spot of paint on top and the bottom part, which is the side we're going to use, is going to be completely dry looking. I need to work a little bit more. And if you could listen to this, and we've got noises all around, my dog's barking and my husband's got his shop radio up. If you could hear it, I'm kind of almost pounding on this board. I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on this. And like I said, you don't have to go through this much work the whole time. Okay, that's better. I don't have any ridges of color on either side, but I have a nice flat body of shiny paint on the top. Okay, so and the next step that's really mandatory is you flick on your paper towel, and that prevents any stop and start marks, any sudden marks. But you don't wipe it off. If you wipe it all off, you won't have any paint to use on your piece. We're going to jump right in load a little bit more now that I've talked. You know, sometimes you get you paint so much you can feel just with your hand how what's going on with your paintbrush. And stay out of the white lined area. So our first and we'll start we always start where the paint is going to be the darkest color or the brightest colors. This is going to go pretty much all the way to our little edges. I'm going to go from edge to edge on these little triangles. Not pressing. Turning our brush sideways if we need to. Just little skims of color. It's going to be hard to see this color. The good news is, is that that means when you get ready to do um, the next color, you know, you'll be all practiced with this color. But it won't you won't be able to see your mistakes. So just proceed and fill in all the rest of these squares and I'll come back when I've got mine all done. Reload your brush as necessary. Like I said, we're going to work dirty brush into dirty brush. I've got my first, I have my first color on the piece. You want to make sure to erase these lines in between. If you don't erase them, it can mess with your mind and it can, you end up leaving bigger gaps than you want to leave. The way we dirty brush load is we just go into the next color. And we have a little bit of um, birds and the bees here. We've got mama paint or papa paint, mama paint, and together because they're dirty in my brush, it's going to make a baby paint. It's going to make a paint that goes perfectly together as the perfect shade color because they're mixed together. So that's a great way to make sure that you have good color har harmony is to have both paints mixed in with each other. Okay, so get a good angle. 
I've got a little bit of a glare going on here. Okay, and this one is not quite going to cover everything that we just did. It's going to make each of these little sections kind of puff up and pop out. Now I'll repeat the color, the same color that I had, and I'm not going back and dirtying in my brush um, into my into oh whatever color I had into the antique maroon. I'm just picking up more and more of the milk chocolate. So I'm not going to take this all the way out to the edge. I'm going to keep this in the more center areas. Like I said, you start with your brush fully loaded in the darkest area, and then you work your way out to the outsides, and that'll reduce the amount of paint that you have on your brush. Just kind of fades and gives roundness to your subject. Stay out of that shadow area. Okay, now we'll wipe. I'm going to wipe my brush off just a little bit, but I'm going to keep it dirty. You can also flip your brush over at this time, and that will help you with um, your brush getting a little kind of a funny tail on the end of it. Reload my brush. Make sure I'm dry. If you have wet paint down here and you try um, painting on top of the wet paint, then what you'll end up with is your paint grabbing where your paint is wet. So you want to make sure you're dry in between layers. Now this gets a little bit smaller area. Notice I'm starting right smack dab. My center of interest is right smack dab in the middle of this piece. I'm using a gentle touch. I wasn't sure what this color was going to do. You know, I pick these colors out and then you guys get to watch me screw up sometimes. Of course, I edit it all out if I do something really awful. See, I got a great big streak right there. I just went ahead and I wiped off my brush where I got the streak from and and that'll smooth out with the next application. If it doesn't, if I get a big mistake, what I can do is I can go into the previous color and I can smooth it out, kind of like makeup that we use on our face to smooth out blemishes. It just kind of tones it down, masks it, and nobody ever knows the difference unless you tell them it's there. Paint is an excellent eraser. It's starting to take some shape right now. I haven't washed my brush yet. Okay, and that's what's going to give us this real blended, nice look. Okay, now see what I just did? I put my paintbrush down over here. I'm going to repeat some of this highlight in the middle, so I'll just repeat that to increase the strength. And then when I scrape off some of this paint, where I can afford it, then I'll go over here to the edges. Pineapples have an awful lot of texture to them. You want to keep your highlight color out of your shadow color, that dark background, otherwise it's going to look like screaming loud. And that's not what we're after. We're after a nice subtle look. Maybe we need a little touch over here. I barely have anything on my brush. try some straw now. I'm going to flip my brush over, pick up the straw. My brush was starting to get that little tail on it. Now because I flipped my brush over, I have a pretty dirty mix. I didn't wipe my brush out before I did that. Okay, we're going to start right smack in the middle again. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's a pretty forgiving technique. Reload as you need to. Remember to start in the middle so you don't get those sudden little whoo. Okay, I'm going to give it one more straw. Now this has got much more straw on it. We're going to keep that really concentrated in the center area. 
step back every now and again and give yourself a little bit of a view from away from it to see how you're doing if you're getting around this or just big glaring polka dots. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think now what we'll do is we'll wait and see um, how now it may be that my um, separations are too far apart um, or it may be that they're they're just fine but I'm not going to know until I get all my other colors on this piece. So now what I'll do, I will not do anything to this for balance until I get to the very end and then I'll start glazing and doing some things to make it look um, to make it look all together. So be careful about wanting to be finished with this area right now, okay? One of the things I want to show you, um, I'm using colors, um, I'm using deco art colors today and I wanted, I'm using a palette that I used before that um, calls for leaf green and I've got these books that I've made um, with paint chips in them and all I did was paint the bottom half of like business card size things and put them in baseball card sleeves and I have them arranged by color family and I've got the discontinued ones marked out and I wanted to see if leaf green was going to be um, oh, dark jungle green, sorry if dark jungle green was going to be close to if I could find my dark jungle green chip. There we are. It's a discontinued color. Okay, so I can take this into my deco art book that I have with the same things, move to my green pages, and I can compare these chips. You know, conversions are great, but boy, a book like this is awesome. I'm doing the same thing with my um, Traditions paint right now, so Avocado looks pretty darn close. Um, I wanted to use Hauser Dark. There's Hauser Medium, where's Hauser Dark? Hello? Oh, there's Hauser Dark. Okay, you know, that's darker than what I have here, but I think that it might be okay. If I go into Hauser Medium, Hauser Medium's not bad either. I could go a little bit dirty brush into those two colors. But I think for our purposes, it's going to be all right. Anyway, these little chips are just handy dandy to have. And they're worth the trouble to make the books because, you know, a conversion chart will only get you so far. I've loaded my um, Hauser Dark Green <coughs> into my green. Or, loaded my brush into my Hauser Dark Green. And now we just start. We want to stay out of any places where these lines, we want to go right up next to the edge, almost like we're base coating. But we don't want a base coat. We just want to skim on the paint. This is going to take a little bit more paint, so you just keep reloading as you need it. Make sure you do go next to those edges. If you don't go next to the edges, it'll look weird. Make sure you avoid any ridges that you get sometimes from loading too much paint. We want to stay out of the shadow area next to um, the fold on this leaf. And we don't want to bring the paint color all the way next to the leaf that it touches. But the leaf that's on top, whatever's on top, gets that, like this fold will get all the way to the edge and almost really base coated with this. But it's still just kind of a skimmy color thing. Once you get this coat on, you'll be able to tell if you've left too big a gap or whatever. And then we'll reduce the coverage on these areas. So we get that all the way next to that edge. We're using the chisel edge sometimes, flipping our hand around. Pull it next to the edge, but not touching. And the um, first coat on this bottom leaf over here, and I wanted to show you, it's really important to use kind of shape following strokes. I'm going to have some sort of darkness going up the middle here, and so I'm going to leave just a little bit of that coming out, and so I'll focus on the ends here and then pull out just little bits into these sharper pointy stems but leaving that middle just a little bit darker. Uh, this first coat's a little bit hard to see, sorry about that. Okay, and then we just pull it up into our stems. Okay, backfill over here just a little bit just to tickle in some color. Turn your piece as you need to. That way you don't have um, funny pulled strokes and shapes. Pull it up, pull it on this side. Okay, now I'm done with that. So I just want to kind of generically 
skim in some color. Mostly you want to be shape following, but in this case it's going to be kind of impossible because the shapes go all over the place. Okay, but this will get us some groundwork going. All right, so in the meantime, I'm going to put my brush in water. I'll re-dirty it into that darkest green. And then we want to erase our, our white lines. Oopsie. Our white lines up here. Always erase the soonest you can. And if you have lines left over and they seem to be sunk into the paint, then what you do is you just go back and give yourself that extra little base coat to cover them up. You can try order odorless turpentine, but I've never had success. I, I suspect my lines are in there because I've been too impatient and not allowed my paint to dry before moving on. Okay, If you lose your place and you can't see where the shapes and stuff are, no problem. Just trace them back on top if you need to. You know, so wait until you think you know what you're doing and then, and then erase. All right, now we want to go with the next lightest color, dirty brush loaded into our paint. Start in our center, our brightest area. Draw it along. And we want to leave our shadow areas. Like, this is not a shadow leaf. This one is kind of in the very front there. Reload paint as you need to. If it's not coming off your brush, you know you need to reload. This edge, where it's next to that shadow, should be much brighter than um, this area right here. So I'm putting my the chisel of my brush right along there. And then this needs to fade out down here. And then right next to this leaf, it's going to fade. I'm going to just let them know that that leaf is ending right there. Okay, this is like one of the center of interest spots right here, so we'll come here and make it nice and crispy. Okay, we're getting some really good form and shape here. I'm just reloading my brush. I ran out of tape on my player. Okay. I think I want to go ahead, I put my, um, I used a soapstone pencil, which is this little handy doodad right here. It'll write on your um, fabric, but then if you want to use just a little bit of water, um, then it erases right there, and it also erases with an eraser. So I went ahead and put indications where I want my um, vein lines, just freehanded them on there. I always want to have a little bit of a nice arch, okay, and if you see something, you know, like maybe this is a little too cone-heady, you know, this top here, you can sketch it out and it comes off real easily. So this is a nice handy little tool. They're like a buck or something like that, but very, very handy to have. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that color, keeping it maybe a little bit reduced. Like I'm not going to take it all the way up to that top edge. Okay, so we're going to just maybe focus a little bit more on our edges and not bring it down quite so far into the shadow area. And that's going to give us our little highlighty areas. Okay, this last guy. Okay, now he's really, he's a little bit busy, he's a little bit big, I'm a little bit afraid. So I'm going to treat him as softly as I can. Helps if I pull out towards myself, I'm noticing, then I can really get that chiseled, ruffly edges. And then as my paint wears off, I notice that it's um, I have to push a little harder. So you make sure you keep your paintbrush loaded correctly. Out here, we're going to do less and less. I'm not going to reload my brush. Okay, I'm just going to do a dusting. And this guy up here is still kind of in our center of interest, but he's moving away. Okay, these guys out here, maybe just give him a little dust on the top edge of the leaf. Okay, and then we'll give just a little bit of this highlight color down here. We don't want these guys to be like lonely or anything, but we want to um, reserve the full strength stuff for up top here. And so everything to the top closest to the center of interest will get a little bit of this color. Okay, just a 
little bit over here. A little bit on this side. We're going to stay away from that far side. Maybe a little down here. Yeah, a little dusting. See, I'm not even paying attention to shape following. I'm just giving them a touch. Yeah, I'm picking up just a little bit of straw, of golden straw, on my with my green. And that's reserved for the really special people. Only in the middle. Notice I'm just giving a little swipe here, but I don't carry it all the way out to these edges. I'm going to just kind of guide the eye upwards. If there's a place where your eye, if you, if you have like yellow here and then yellow way up here, your eye won't be able to leap way over that. So you have to touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, like skipping rocks in a, um, you know, when you're jumping on rocks in a little stream or something like that. Your eye needs something to, to carry itself over on as well. Okay, just a touch more strong. Okay, in our highlight area. And so that really comes forward. A little tickle. Squint at it and see if everybody's happy here. I don't want anything isolated too much. Right, so I'm going to use this new little Mighty Fine Liner that I found. I'm going to thin my paint to ink-like consistency. And I'm going to put in my little arching vein lines. Nothing too fussy, and I want to fade that out right there, coming out of the, the dark. If that becomes too dominant later, then I'll go in and oop, as you throw your paintbrush across the room, just wipe it off. I end up launching liner brushes more than any other brush. I have no idea why. Okay. So I can feel free to erase anything that's still showing right there. We're going to start on our pear. I hope I know what I'm doing with my pear because and so I've got this thing all planned out and you know you sit there and you just doubt yourself so we'll see what I what I end up with. I don't want it to take over. I want it to be a yellow pear and so I'm going to load into the same sequence as my um, pineapple. I'm going to try and leave this dark edge much darker. Okay, These rounder shapes, we're just going to get this background color on here. Okay, remember we're going to go all the way next to our edge. Looks like I might have left a little bit of water in my brush. For this coat, that's probably going to be okay. I'm going to use shape following strokes. Okay, as we get towards the middle, we straighten out. Don't want it too base coaty. Right next to that edge. Reverse it around, reload, click on our paper towel, and this is where you gotta make sure you keep that roundness. Let me go right there. This pear is very stylized, which means that it's like very traditional, like pear shaped, um, which I don't really like. I want them lumpier, but I didn't want anything too interesting down here, so I went ahead and left it normal, like you're gonna your eye would just know that it was a pear kind of a thing, so it's kind of my strategy. Now in this area right here, in this neck, we want to keep that darker. So I'm just going to kind of dance and stay out of that area. But these round pieces of fruit, this is where we're going to um, move into a dry rub technique, which is easier to maintain the roundness. I'm not going to worry too much about this. I'm going to go ahead and go into the same color and do my apple. And he's, once again, he's a very round apple. And we want to keep away from that pear a little bit to create that shadow. And 
And you notice a pretty small brush that I'm using, this number 8 brush, but um, you know, it just takes a few extra flicks and it seems to do pretty good. That's what the dry rubbing technique with those stencil brushes is going to do um, because this brush is small. It's going to help us um, not end up with little streaks everywhere in our apple. Okay, so shape following, remember. Okay, on this back area has a shape following stroke too. The middle is straight down into this area. The sides come off to the edges and then you split the difference, straightening out and then pulling at your angle on either side. That leaves that little dark spot where the apple is um, bent and stuff. Okay, so now we're ready to move into a dry rub technique. I'm going to use this Crescent stencil brush. It's cut the same way as this, oh, this filbert is. It's a filbert cut and it's domed from side to side, just maybe not as much. We need a dry paper towel, so I'm going to turn over my paper towel. And what we're going to do here is we're going to um, highlight, and so we'll dip dry. You cannot have this brush wet. It's got to be completely dry. I'm going to go into my milk chocolate. And you rub it into the, the brush, but then you dry it completely off. And then you choose where you need to highlight, like we're going to know that this area up here. Ah, and one problem I see that we're having right there is that this is too dusty looking on top. It was too big a color jump, so I'm going to load a little bit of my antique maroon in that color. Dirty it up just a little bit. And we don't want to go right next to the edge. Shape following strokes. Maybe cover that up just a little bit. Okay, and now then to the milk chocolate again. Okay, and use that just. In a circle up here, and then just rubbing shape following down here. Okay, we're getting a nice pear looking piece of fruit there. Okay, I'm going to repeat that color. But less. Okay. I'm going to be a little bit careful that you don't end up with two styles of painting here. So what we're going to do to handle that in just a second is give this piece of fruit some streaks and stuff. We don't want this to be so blended and this to be so streaky because that's not going to look right together. Okay, now we're going to pick up that next highlight color. Um, cocoa, I believe it is. Okay. We're going to keep that up near the top. Yeah, a little bit more. Sometimes you wipe off too much paint. You can wipe off less and see if we can't achieve a little bit of that streaky look. Okay, it's getting a nice little line there. Okay, yeah, I'm liking those streaks. Okay, and I think we're going to call that to the place we want with this dry brush. So I'm going to wash out my brush so that by the time I use it again, it might be dry. I really recommend having three or four different sizes of these little guys because you can't use them wet. And um, boy, I just love, like when I do the glazing and stuff, I'll probably use this brush to do some of that with. So you dry it out on your paper towel real strong. I'm going to do a little bit more dry rubbing. I'm going to use my clean, <clears throat> my other brush, my second brush on the apple. Pardon me, I just had a sneezing fit. And so I'm going to just rub on a little more of this color and then I'll have my brush nice and dirty um, in case I have that color jump like I did on the pear. And I just fill in, round it out just a little bit, it's staying out of my shadow area right here. So it looks like those things are in the top and the bottom. Okay. 
And now we're going to pick up Heritage Brick and rub it up on a paper towel. And we're going to start in, we want the, the brightest colors to be up near the center of interest, okay? So we're going to start not next to the edge, but a little bit away from the edge. Let's see what we get with this color. That's going to red it up just a little bit. Sometimes, in order to get my paint to stick to my piece with this dry rubbing technique, I have to stipple it on. And then once I get some kind of base, it'll behave itself, but I don't know why that does that. But Okay, this area right here where that smile is going to be is going to be an area that gets full paint. And so we need to make sure that we go in with our <clears throat> dry brush. We want it to drag just along here. That gets just full coverage paint. And now our job is to blend that now that it's sticking out like a sore thumb. <clears throat> so we'll get a little bit of this stipply action going. And then just stipple down towards the body of the fruit. Okay, and that's blending a little bit more. I don't want to go too red over in that area, so I'm going to bring it back over here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. What are we doing on colors? <clears throat> now I'm going to dirty brush into my highlight color, which is um, gingerbread. Rub it off real good. I don't know how chalky this is going to be. Now my brush is dirty, but it's dry. Make sure my painting is dry. We're using such microscopic amounts of paint. Okay, now this is going to be a highlight up in this area right here. I don't know why my apple doesn't want to rub. It wants to be a stenciled apple. It's a pretty good color for this highlight, I think. looks like. My, um, <clears throat> if you leave your paint brushes in the paint, in the water, then the paint off your handles will crack. But besides getting onto your piece like that just did for me, it doesn't cause me too much pain. If it was more painful, I'd probably quit doing it. Okay, I'm look for a clean spot to do this on. I think I want it to be a little higher as far as highlight goes. Bring that down just a little bit. I'm totally ignoring that back area because that is impossible to do with this technique. Okay, I think I'm happy with that for right now. I'm going to plop my brush into the water where it doesn't belong and switch to my dry brush. And we're going to pick up, we're going to dirty our brush with the antique maroon and we're going to pick up the red color, the heritage brick, flick it on our paper towel, and we need to make this area back here stand out just a little bit more. It's going to be strong on this edge. Make that shadow area not quite so dominant. Okay, that's better. I'm taping this oval. I've got my oval drawn out and you stretch, I've got stretchy tape here, and you stretch it as you pull it to guide it and then you bray it down with your thumbnail. I stink at painting ovals. I don't know why. I always end up with some sort of hiccup in the middle of them. Okay, I want that to be nice and pretty lined. 
And so I'm cheating. I love to cheat as far as painting goes. I don't like to work very hard at it. I want it to be easy and fun. It's a hobby. <clears throat> I think I have a little bit of a hiccup or flat spot right there. Take that off and redo it. Oh yeah, that's good. All right, now I've got to match that on the other side. Now I'm going to take this and start where that leaves off. So you try not to make a flat spot. It, this only works for me if I've got my line drawn. I can't make an oval line without drawing it first, and that takes a lot of struggle. So um, get it drawn, trace it on, correct it. So you get, get nice and pretty. That's a flat spot right there. Oops, that's a flat spot. Got a curve. Maybe I have astigmatism for ovals, huh? And if you squint at your piece, you'll be able to see flat spots and things better. You can kind of almost feel them happening. If it's too easy and it just goes instantly to the oval shape, then... Okay, let's see. Let's follow that with our line. Okay, this one's a little bit longer than that one. Okay, now we have to do the inside line. We want it to be even, even distance apart. Okay, and I gotta kind of stand up and get on top of this puppy. Okay, and I bend this top piece out like that. So it gives me something to start with. It's not gonna be too thick. Hmm. I think it's gonna be too thick. Go back up there, start again. Okay, bend that out. And we're looking for evenness. And you can pull. Whoopsie, make sure you don't lose it at the end. Oh yeah, that's great. <clears throat> I'm gonna repeat this other side and I'll catch up with you. Okay, so I got both sides painted and I made sure I tapped it down really well. What we're going to do is we're going to use these little sponges. This little, it's a makeup applicator sponge. I'm going to use the Antique Maroon and I'm really going to pat it kind of dry on there. And then we just tap that in between. We want to be careful not to go outside, but if we do, we can clean it up with our black paint. Real kind of dry, pat it down. Yep, see what I just did? I biffed it. The thicker tape is easier to keep in the lines, but it's harder to um, it's harder to bend. So I like the thicker the thicker tape I can use the better, but it is tougher to bend. Funny thing is my canvas is a little bit resisting this. It's buckling underneath the pressure of the tape being bent. So I don't think I have a whole lot of time to play around. If I had wood. I it would be okay, but canvas says no, no. Okay, I just get that all on there. I'm just going to do one, one simple coat of this color, just taking it to the leaves, and then I'm going to go back from the beginning, give it one more quick tap of color. Nothing too strong. <clears throat> I'm going to tape the edges on my um, the border and trim too. Okay, and then we just take the tape off. And isn't that slick? All right. And so all I have to do is a little bit of cleanup where I and this um, is dry dusty from my fingers. But isn't that pretty how nice that came out? So nice and even. It's perfect. Okay, we want to do our lettering. We're going to do our lettering in the same sequence of colors as, um, as the, this body of the pineapple here. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to side load our brush. We're just going to run it through the paint. Kind of strong. We want this to be almost base coaty. And we're going to run the edges down, down the edges. We want to move in pretty fluid movements to keep our lines straight. Okay, 
Okay. So just do this, work this, all these letters until you get everybody kind of kind of based in. I would work all one side and then flip it over and work the other side. That way you're, you, you can see, see I'm right-handed, so I can see on the um, on the left side of my brush, but if I was trying to do that side, I'd have to see over my knuckles and everything. I wouldn't be able to see it. So you could also just, you know, turn the piece and stuff like that, but I find it easier just to do one side, flip the whole thing over, and repeat on the other side. It makes it cleaner and nicer. Now that I have um, both sides kind of chiseled in, I'm going to go back in and fill in my center areas with the chisel of my brush. Filled in just till I get all the lines nice and sharp. And you can use a liner brush to get these top lines um, real sharp and crispy. The idea is lettering pretty much, unless you're doing some sort of handwriting and stuff like that, lettering should be pretty crisp looking. Clean up anything that is yucky with your black paint before you get started doing anything else. Just make sure everything is nice and clean. And then you'll know that you'll have beautiful lettering when you get done. Chisel loaded, side loaded my dry brush into um, milk chocolate. And I'm just running it along the left edge. I think I must favor the left edge because I'm right handed. I wonder if that's true. All right. And then we're just going to go ahead and make sure that's all nice and chiseled. And when we do that, we lick our finger and we remove it. Take out a blackberry detailer. And get that out of there. You know, the deal is, is not such a bad thing if you screw up as long as you know how to fix it. And usually that means just taking it out with some paint or get some water real quick in there and, and erase it. If you dip your eraser into water, it'll take paint off that's been on there for about five minutes. So that's kind of a neat trick too. All right, and get a little fresh paint. I'm going to give a little bit of a chisel up here. If I get messy, I'll go in with black and I'll clean it up. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to go into the cocoa color on the side of my brush. I'm going to reduce this in, in coverage, getting down towards the middle. I'm going to keep this highlight in the middle of my letter. Okay, so this will get it nice and strong. Keep picking that paint up on the chisel edge of your brush. If you don't, it starts getting kind of dry brushy looking and that's not the look we're after right here. Okay, maybe repeat one more time. Okay, now we're going to pick up a golden straw, and that's going to go in the middle of all that. Okay, checking how it's looking. All right, so we're going to do that going all the way across these letters. Okay, I'm adding a little hash line. I've got a round brush. I'm adding little graduated sized hash marks kind of going straight across the brightest spot of the letters. Don't be afraid to go outside of this line. Okay, I'm going to leave that one alone. Try and keep these kind of lined up. It's going to carry your eye across. The middle one is the biggest. It's always kind of fun to do this kind of thing because you're going outside the lines. I like that. Okay, now we're going to step down just a little bit. arch thing going on there. All right, that's looking real pretty. All right, I'm going to bring a gold band around here, and so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to tape it as well. The ways that you can make an even line around your um, piece is to use a compass. So you just measure it out how far you want it out. Just run it all the way around, and it'll be guaranteed to be straight 
on all of your edges. Now whether your edges are straight, that's another story. Now I'm going to put some vines in there. I'm a vine freak, so i tuck that one behind there. And I twist my brush between my finger and my thumb as I'm bringing these vines in. My paint's slightly watered, and we're going to bring some of these little tenderly guys up here. And I'm going to bring it right on top of my pineapple. Okay, I'm going to bring these up. Let's see, we've got some of this happening over here. This is kind of going to help carry the eye around through the piece. It's also going to bring our letters down through um, down through via the, the border and the color usage and stuff like that. Bring these guys up here. Line this in front of this letter. It'll disappear. Come back around. Okay, right on top. Now if you're not a vine fan, you could certainly stop um, at the place where we just left off and not do the vines. I like a little bit of loose fluff. If you like things a little bit more primitive and simple, then leaving it would be a brilliant idea. going to scatter some berries with my little pinky half loaded here and there and then I'll go through and highlight them. So different sizes, varying widths. Don't push too hard everywhere. Push bigger in some places. fine liner and we're going to load it in thin cocoa and we're going to highlight some of these areas here as they come around. We don't want to cover up the whole um, whole milk chocolate line. We just want to make it stand out just a little bit more so you can see what you're seeing. Okay. And we'll go back in and we'll do one more pass with this and try and keep them jerky. Um, we don't want them to be real smooth, fine lines. Okay. We got out desert sand. We'll make our really strong highlights on our berries. Okay, a couple of real strong ones coming down here. Keep our center of interest where our center of interest belongs a little bit of my gingerbread and my um, milk chocolate. I want to streak a little bit of highlighty green, uh, orangey kind of color. Now careful as you get to the middle, you need to start streaking the other way. It's got to be shape following if you're going to add streaks. If you don't feel like you can do the shape following, you better leave them off because it'll screw up your whole piece of fruit there. Okay, that gave that just a little bit more life. See how that did? Now I'm going to a little bit of something going on there. I've got to bring these streaks out. Whoops. And there goes. Maybe I should have left them off. Bring them down. Yeah, I like that lots better. Okay, now we want to go into a little bit of our milk chocolate and our, um, what color is that? The cocoa. And now our piece of pear fruit here is looking a little bit, I'm going to blot that a little bit like it's lonely too down here. This is the nice thing about doing this at the end is you get to see kind of how you thought you are doing, you know. You don't have to go correct everything. Now I've added golden straw to my, to my brush. I just want a couple of little streakies. Lot my brush, completely wipe it off there, bring down a little bit more highlight. I think I want to get, wipe my brush off, 
thick of golden yellow. I'm just going to flatten the brush. Let's perk up some of this stuff in here. walk around like this until you get it how you want it. A bit more on our pear. See if we go around and we correct everything at the same time, at the same time, then um, we get that balance that we're looking for. Okay, I get a little bit. Thing. I want more, I want more. So we would give it some more. There we go. Make that pair step up. Okay, and I think on our apple, now that we've done that, let's take a flat brush and our um, what color is this antique maroon and make a wash out of it blot our brush and let's go ahead and give that just a little wash of color over everything that we've done see if that doesn't red him up again a little bit and then we'll give our same thing to the bottom part of our pear just in the shadow area see what that does for him because pears aren't really so red but he could be a wash pear now I'm taking Nathal Red in a kind of a wash, and I'm going to add, I'm going to add it to share the red love here. Not everywhere, keeping it more like in the shadow area. I'm just kind of faint. Get that apple just a little bit redder. None of this on our pear. And maybe we can go in on the other side of our little berries and red them up just a little with a real strong. Just the ones in the middle where they need some attention. Put a little bit of this in our leaf. A little bit on either side of our pineapple. And I think maybe we'll go ahead with a little bit in this border right here. Bring that out. Chisel edge of our brush. Okay, a little bit more down here in the apple. You see what we're doing? We're just really just working on balance. bring some blue into this piece but I'm thinking no, I'm not gonna okay at the bottom of my letters just a little bit in that dark area just to carry the eye around okay I think the only thing I have a question about can't tell if I'm right or wrong. It's whether or not that pear needs a little bit more attention, but I'm thinking I'm going to leave it right now. I'll wait until the morning and then I'll decide. So make sure you sign your piece, give it the date and everything like that, and um, roll on your varnish. When you get done with canvas projects, what you want to do is you always want to roll the varnish on, and that gives you um, a real nice even coverage. 
Make sure you erase everything that you need to erase first. And if you're going to hang this outside, then you need to use exterior varnish, which will hold up in the elements and things like that. Thank you.